Welcome now to a mini lecture about the Alexander polynomial and how it behaves with respect to reverses and mirrors, and also its connection with the determinant. So this is a mini lecture trying to explain to you how proposition 5.7 works. So here we go, here's the proposition itself. It says uh, that if you take the Alexander polynomial of a link L, substitute minus one in place of T, so that'll give you, well, delta L, that was a polynomial in T. So if you evaluate it minus one, that gives you a number. Take its absolute value, what you get is the determinant back. And I hope it's clear that there ought to be some connection given that the Alexander polynomial is just a souped up version. And if you look in the notes, you can see exactly how that works. Part two of the proposition says that if you take the Alexander polynomial of a mirror, that's the mirror of the link L, then you get the Alexander polynomial, but with T inverse subbed in in place of T. And the same is true for the reverse. That was the reverse there. Okay, and I'm going to show you about how to prove the second one here. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and the way I've decided to talk about it is by showing you on the left here, and this big box on the left, what we have is the computation of the Alexander polynomial of a not K. So this is the knot, it's the trefoil, oriented in this way. I labeled the arcs, x0, x1, x2. I labeled the crossings, uh, blue, green, and pink. I've written out the polynomial coloring equations, that's here. Uh, I've put the coefficients of the polynomial coloring equations into this matrix. I've deleted a row and column, the first row and column, to get this matrix. And then I've taken its determinant to get this, that the Alexander polynomial of the knot k is one minus t squared plus t. And I haven't simplified that because I didn't, well, I ought to have simplified it, but I've chosen not to for the purposes of demonstration. Okay, so that was what was on the left-hand side. Now, here on the far right-hand side, we have the computation of the Alexander polynomial of the mirror of that knot k. So what I've done is I've taken the mirror of the diagram of k, and I've done it by reflecting in a horizontal line. So you see what used to be the arc x2 on the right in k is now the arc x2 on the left. And uh, you see that the arrow on the arc x2 used to point to the left, now it points to the right. Uh, similarly, the arc x0, which used to be on the left, is now on the right. The arc x1 used to be on the top, but still is, but it points the other way. Uh, green crossing used to be on the right, now it's on the left, etc. So I've mirrored the diagram, mirrored the orientation as I must do, and I've also carried with me all the labels that I had for the original knot. Then, written out the polynomial coloring equations. So we got the, we got the diagram, written out the polynomial coloring equations, written those coefficients into a matrix, deleted the first row and column to get this matrix, taking the determinant to get the Alexander polynomial of the mirror. And, well, let me try and show you why uh, we have that the uh, substituting the inverse in for one of these gives us the previous one. Well, actually, let's just work out what are those Alexander polynomials. Uh, so delta k, uh, no, let's work out. Delta mk t, that's, well, I've written it down here. Um, it's, but if I expand, it's t squared minus t plus one. And delta k of t, that's t squared minus t plus 1. Forget the fact that these are equal. Uh, that's just an accident uh, because the example is simple. Um, but if we work out delta k t inverse, what we get is t to the minus 2 minus t inverse plus 1. And uh, I want to show that the first thing is equal dot, the second one. What does equal dot mean? It means uh, equal uh, after timesing through by a power of t or multiplying by minus 1. And indeed, this is t squared times 1 minus t inverse plus t to the minus 2, which is t squared times delta k of t inverse, you see. Uh, and this is an ad lib, which is why it's so badly organized. So t squared times anything is equal dot to itself. So we get that. So they are equal dot, which means up to a power of t. Okay, let me try and show you 
why that happened. And I'm going to do that by copying my computation of uh, the Alexander polynomial of k evaluated at t, and I'm going to turn it into a computation of the Alexander polynomial of k evaluated at t inverse. And I have to do that from the bottom up, right? So here's the Alexander polynomial evaluated at t inverse. Now, how could I have got that from this uh, matrix above? Well, if I'd substituted t inverse for t in the matrix above and then taken its determinant, then I would get this polynomial here. OK, well, how can I have got this matrix from this matrix above it? Well, if I'd substituted t inverse in place of t in the matrix at the top, then taking, uh, deleting a row and column from the 3x3 three three matrix would give me this 2x2 two two matrix. Um, how could I get this 3x3 three three matrix from uh, these equations? I could get it by replacing the equations with the ones I get by substituting t inverse in instead. Um, now, where does this get me? Well, this looks horrible because uh, I've got inverses now in here. Well, if I multiply through by t squared on the right-hand side, then what I get on the new right-hand side will certainly be equal dot to delta k t inverse. And what I will get will be, well, if I multiply t inverse by t squared, I just get t. And if I multiply 1 minus t inverse by t squared, what do I get? I get t minus 1 all squared. Now, what does multiplying through by t squared in the determinant of something correspond to in terms of the matrix? Well, it corresponds to multiplying the whole matrix by t squared. Um, ah, no. Multiplying the whole matrix by t means you multiply the determinant by t squared because it's a 2 by 2 matrix. So I'm multiplying through by t. That's going to become a 1. This is going to become t minus 1. And this will be t minus 1. And the same thing here, I multiply through by t. So it's become 1. This will become minus t. This will become t minus 1. This will become 1. This one minus t. This one, 1. This one, t minus 1. This one, t minus 1. And this one minus t. And what does that correspond to up here? Well, up here it corresponds to multiplying everything through by t. So we would get tx0 plus x2 minus x0 minus tx1. Uh, tx1 plus x0 minus x1 minus tx2. Uh, tx2 plus t plus x1 minus x2 minus tx0. Okay, uh, and now you wonder what I'm trying to do. Well, I'm trying to make the uh, computation of delta kt inverse look exactly like the computation of the uh, Alexander polynomial of the mirror. Um, and do you see it's getting closer? Um, we're almost there. I'm going to multiply everything by minus, am I going to multiply through by minus 1? No, I'm going to multiply through the bottom by minus 1 squared. That corresponds to multiplying the whole matrix itself by minus 1. What happens if I multiply the matrix by minus 1? Well, minus t becomes plus t, plus 1 becomes minus 1, t minus 1 becomes 1 minus t, t minus 1 becomes 1 minus t. Uh, so that corresponds to multiplying everything in the previous matrix by minus 1. So like this uh, and that corresponds to multiplying the whole equation up here by minus 1 now this is possibly the confusingest part um, if I multiply through by minus 1 well let me do it in the first equation in the blue equation Uh, can you see that the blue equation here is just a rearrangement of the blue equation there? Let's check minus tx0, minus tx0. 
minus x2 minus x2 plus x0 plus x0 plus dx1 plus dx1. And if I do that everywhere, then what I find is in fact all the equations are just the mirrors of one another. So what have I done? Let me summarize if I can. Um, I've taken the computation of delta kt, substituted t inverse into it to get the computation of delta k of t inverse. And then at the bottom, I replaced uh, my original right hand side with minus t all squared times the original right hand side. And then I copied up through the, through the computation uh, what changes in the previous step could lead to that? What changes in the previous step could lead to that? What changes in the previous step could lead to that? So then what I've got written now is a different way to compute delta kt inverse. And finally, we observed that it's exactly how you compute delta of mk. So that's supposed to be an active sketch of the proof. If you look at the proof, which is in the notes, you'll see that that's exactly how it works. Um, I fear this was rather confusing. So um, best of luck. And that's the end of the lecture.